Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Sabin County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 48. This is the Friday, April 16th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. Jumping right in with the top five fiction bestsellers for the week from the New York Times. At number one, The Hill We Climb by Amanda Gorman. The poem read on President Joe Biden's inauguration day by the youngest poet to write and perform an inaugural poem. At number two, The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. As dust storms roll during the Great Depression, Elsa must choose between saving the family and farm or heading west. At number three, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. In a quiet town on the North Carolina coast, back in 1969, a young woman who survived alone in the marsh, becomes a murder suspect. At number four, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Nora Seed finds a library beyond the edge of the universe that contains books with multiple possibilities of the lives one could have lived. And at number five, Good Company by Cynthia Dieprix Sweeney. The foundation of a marriage between actors is shaken when they reunite with an old friend who is now a TV star. And moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. At number one, Broken Horses by Brandi Carlisle. The Grammy award-winning singer and songwriter recounts difficulties during her formative years and her hard-won successes. At number two, Finding Freedom by Erin French, a memoir by the chef and owner of The Lost Kitchen in Freedom, Maine. At number three, Broken by Jenny Lawson. The humorous maps out her mental and physical health journey. At number four, Beautiful Things by Hunter Biden. The lawyer and artist, who is the son of the current president, details tragedies within his family and his path to sobriety. And at number five, The Light of Days by Judy Badalin. How Jewish Women in Poland Turned Jewish Youth Groups into Resistant Cells to Fight the Nazis and Help Build Systems of Underground Bunkers. Our first recommended read for this week is the new novel, The Final Revival of Opal and Nev, written by Donnie Walton. After being named the first African American and the first woman editor-in-chief of the music magazine Aurel, S. Sonny Shelton, aka S. Sonny Curtis, adopts a passion project, gathering the oral history of Opal Jewel and Nev Charles, an avant-garde rock duo who found success and a certain cult following in the early 70s. How Opal, the ebony-skinned provocateur, the fashion rebel, the singer, screecher, Afro-punk ancestor from Detroit, and goofy white English boy Nev met is the stuff of legend. And Sonny has her own proximity to their story. Her father played drums for Opal and Nev, and was killed by the white supremacist brawlers 
who stormed one of their concerts. A world famous photo exists of that terrible night, just one of the many topics Sonny takes to her interviewees, music execs, bandmates, fellow artists, friends, family, and the stars themselves, all memorable characters for her sprawling documentary project. Former magazine editor Walton's debut novel is so lucidly envisioned, readers will wish that YouTube videos existed of the fictional Opal and Neb. The last third especially shines when Sonny and Opal break through to each other on a new level and readers understand them both more thoroughly. A cinematic, stereophonic, and boldly imagined story of race, gender, and agency in art. And that is the book list review. And I'm gonna step out on a slight limb here and say that even though it's only April, I bet this title is gonna be on a number of the best of the year book lists at the end of 2021. It's definitely on my reading list. Our second recommended read for this week is the new mystery by Alice Clare, whose real name is actually Elizabeth Harris. I discovered that when I did some research on how to pronounce that first name, A-L-Y-S, something close to Alice, or Alice, Alice, I think. In any case, I'm digressing. This is a historical fiction novel. It's new. It's called The Outcast Girls. And it's actually the second book in a series. Set in London during the Victorian period, Claire's latest is engaging, dark, atmospheric, and at times quite charming and humorous. After her career as a maternity nurse in India ended distressingly, Lily Rayner returned to London. Seeking another career option, she opened her own private investigation agency. After some initial modest successes, she now needs an assistant. Expecting to hire a woman, Lily is surprised when the best candidate is Felix Wilbram, a young man with hidden talents and a rather mysterious past. The pair soon find themselves with two demanding cases. First, wealthy Lord Berwick asks Lily to find evidence that the actress his near do well son plans to marry is an unsuitable wife for a future peer of the realm. Second, Ernest Stibbins is concerned about a potential threat against his wife, Albertina, a gifted medium. While he can't specify what the threat might be, he's terrified that his beloved and much younger wife is in grave danger. A clever plot to engaging sleuths, plenty of period ambience, and a satisfying ending Make this a fine choice for all mystery collections. And that is the book list review. And as this is the second book in a series, the series is called the World's End Bureau Victorian Mystery Series. If you'd like to start with the first book, it's called The Woman Who Spoke to Spirits. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a romance. It's called Chasing Cassandra, written by Lisa Kleypas and read by Mary Jane Wells. Opposites attract in spectacular fashion in the sixth Victorian era romance in bestseller Kleypas's Ravenel series. This novel pairs a true romantic with a cynical intellectual. Lady Cassandra Ravenel has turned down many proposals 
holding out for real feeling. But that doesn't stop a railway magnate, Tom Severin, from asking for her hand within moments of meeting her. Though she ignores his proposal, the shrewd businessman fancies her from just a glance and sees winning her as a thrilling challenge. His pursuit leads the pair to grow close. But when Tom starts to feel more than lust, he abruptly ends their budding friendship to avoid the liability he feels that his emotions pose on his cold, calculated life, leaving a smitten Cassandra confused and hurt. They continue to run into each other, and their physical and mental attraction proves too strong to ignore. When one of Cassandra's scorned suitors slanders her reputation, Tom is determined to protect her. The plot is well balanced, the pace steady, the characters deliciously complex, and the chemistry electric. Returning readers will also be pleased by cameos from characters from earlier installments. Clapus fans and first timers alike will fall in love with this refreshing romance. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. And if you'd like to start this series from the beginning, you'll have to pause the video, but here's the reading list. The first book is called Cold Hearted Rake. Our second audiobook recommendation for this month is also a romance, and it revolves around a book club, and as a librarian, I just couldn't resist. It's called The Smitten Book Club, written by Colleen Coble and read by Kirsten Billerbeck. The century-old gentlewoman's guide to love and courtship is no ordinary book club choice. But for the little book club in Smitten, Vermont, it just might be their best pick yet. The thick, a leathery tome, Heather pulled out of the dusty cardboard box, was definitely coming home with her. Not only was The Gentlewoman's Guide to Love and Courtship an appealing curiosity, simply by virtue of its title, it was also written by smitten Vermont native Pearl Chambers, a local gentlewoman from three generations back. Little did Heather know the repercussions this little curiosity would have on her and her friends' romantic exploits. When Heather and her book club members began passing the book around, their respective interpretations are unleashed on the respective love lives, for better or for worse. Is it a mystery? An idealist fantasy? An imitation of Jane Austen? As romantic love finds its way to each woman, the guide proves itself both surprisingly prescient and hilariously irrelevant. What's more, a handwritten inscription indicates that the arcane book just might hold the only exact clues leading to buried gold, exactly what one of the members needs to keep her house. So how could they not go treasure hunting? And I think the answer to that last question is they couldn't not go treasure hunting. But to find out, you'll have to read or listen to the audiobook. Our first streaming recommendation for this week is the 2019 film The Peanut Butter Falcon, available now through Amazon Prime Video. The writing and directing duo of Tyler Nielsen and Michael Schwartz conceived this gentle comedy drama to showcase the talents of Zach Gostian a young actor with Down syndrome, playing a character with the same disorder. His is a journey of discovery 
and self-realization. A Huck Finn style downriver trip alongside a fisherman with troubles of his own. Rendered with charming humanity and picturesque beauty. The supporting cast is stuffed, but Dakota Johnson is the standout as the young man's caretaker and the fisherman's potential romantic interest. Our critic praised the picture's relaxed and amiable vibe. And that overview is by Jason Bailey from the New York Times. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the film A Simple Plan from 1998, available now through Hulu. A few years before realigning his career with the Ott's Spider-Man trilogy, and thus moving from cult genre filmmaker to blockbuster maker, Sam Raimi crafted this quietly devastating thriller that falls well outside of either designation. Bill Paxton and Billy Bob Thornton, who earns an Oscar nomination for the role, star as two brothers who think they've come across a gold mine when they discover a suitcase full of cash in a downed aircraft, only to find out that there's no such thing as an easy score. Scott B. Smith adapts his best-selling novel with verve and efficiency, while Raimi builds a palpable atmosphere of slowly advancing but inevitable doom. And that overview, too, is from the New York Times. It's a very well-acted film. And our third streaming recommendation for this week is really something different. It's what I would describe as a semi-dark farce. It's the 2017 film Death of Stalin, available now through Netflix. The movie begins with a disaster. On Moscow Radio one evening, the pianist Maria Yudina and orchestra do a heck of a job on a Mozart program. So much so that Stalin phones in and asks that a recording be sent over to his DACA. One problem, Radio Moscow wasn't recording. Panic ensues. Only one solution is possible. Restage the concert and record it. Maria, who lost a relative to Dear Leader, refuses until she's sufficiently bribed. The conductor drops out in mortal fear. What if his work on the recreation isn't up to snuff? The work eventually gets done, an acetate is prepared, and Maria slips a poison pen note into the sleeve. Reading it, Stalin drops dead. Secret police leader Beria, accompanied by highly hapless Central Committee bigwig Malenkov, take charge of the situation, with Beria discovering and pocketing the note. Other Central Committee members, including Nikita Khrushchev, soon show up, and the jockeying for advantage extends to the order in which all their limos leave from the DACA. The plotting and backstabbing grows more elaborate as funeral arrangements are made and Stalin's children have to be dealt with. And that's the Roger Ebert review of what is a semi-dark comedy, but if you're in the mood for this type of a film, it's, it's very interesting, it really is. Our Hoopla recommendation for this week is a streaming documentary. It's called Gassar Bard's Tale. This is actually in Tibetan. It has English subtitles. 2013 documentary. As a boy, Bada was an illiterate Tibetan nomad whose life revolved around herding yaks. At 13, his life changed. Through a series of visions, Da, 
acquired the gift of telling the epic story of Tibet's King Gieser. Now at 35, Da receives a salary from the government as a guardian of national cultural heritage and is regarded as a holy man by his community. When an earthquake reduces his hometown to rubble, redevelopment of the region takes a giant leap forward. In the midst of such seismic shifts, Da seeks healing from King Gezer and other divine protectors of the land. This one's fascinating. If you like documentaries, I thought it was cool. Check it out. And finally, our odd duck recommendation of the week. And this week I've got two quick recommendations and they relate to Earth Day, which is April 22nd. That is this coming Thursday. And to celebrate the beauty and diversity of our planet, I'm going to recommend that you check out the two neat Earth Day collections found in the digital and Hoopla catalogs. And of course, going for a walk outside might be a great thing to do too. I know I'm going to do that. The Earth Day collection in the digital catalog, which can be found online at stls.overdrive.com, features 97 titles, including the five you see on the screen here. You can also access the collection through the Libby or Overdrive app. And the Hoopla collection features 62 instant checkout titles, and it can be accessed online at hooplaDigital.com or through the Hoopla app on your mobile device. And that's our odd duck for the week. If you have questions about this weekly video cast, let me know. You can send an email to me at rhymerl at stls.org and I'll get back to you. Again, that's R-E-I-M-E-R-L at stls.org. And of course, you can always call the library too, and I'll give you the phone number in just a second. Current library hours are Mondays and Fridays, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we are currently closed on Wednesdays and Sundays. Here we see the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. You can find a whole host of information about the library through our website, including our calendar of events and the list of online catalogs. The library's appointments page is also found on our website simply click on the purple make appointment text located near the top of each page on our website and you can make an appointment to use a public computer or for curbside pickup. StarCat and the BookMine app. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials, all of which are available for all card holders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library System and that encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Shimong, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. If you'd like to use the web version of the catalog, you can go online and go to starcat.stls.org. And if you prefer using an app, you can download the BookMine app, which is seen on the right side of the screen, from your app store. The Digital Catalog with companion apps Libby and Overdrive. The Digital Catalog features ebooks downloadable audiobooks, a handful of streaming videos, and digital magazines. You can access the catalog online at stls.overdrive.com, or if you prefer to use an app, download the Libby app to your newer device, or the Overdrive app to your older device or your Kindle tablet. You can also use a dedicated e-reader, like a Kindle Paperwhite, and enjoy library ebooks on that device. The digital catalog like StarCat is available to all card holders within the Southern Tier Library System, and it's a terrific catalog. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, full length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout no waiting, for Southeast Stuben County Library card holders 
with a maximum of six checkouts per month. You can find the Hoopla catalog online at hooplaDigital.com, or you can download the Hoopla app to your smartphone, tablet, smart TV, or video streaming player. Communicating with the library. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or want to make an appointment for curbside pickup, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's phone number is area code 607-936-3713. You can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs, we have five of them. The Book Club for Adults, which offers information as you would expect about the monthly book club for adults. The local history blog, Corning NY History. Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells. And Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory blog, which also occasionally offers some helpful how-to tech tips. Try saying that 10 times fast helpful tech tips. And here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great day.